Putin's going to lie. He's a, he's a former KGB colonel. This is what really pisses me off the most when you see conservatives on conservative websites say, oh, Vladimir Putin standing up for the West and Christianity. This is a guy who persecuted Christians when he was a KGB officer. Our next guest, you can follow him on the Twitter at Seb Gorka. He's the author of the New York Times bestseller, Defeating Jihad. Uh, his new book coming out, Why We Fight, July 23rd. He's a, a military intelligence analyst. And he was a uh, former deputy assistant to United States President Donald yeah. Trump in 2017. We've had him on the show before. Uh, Dr. Gorka, thank you for being here, sir. Hey, guys. Great to be back. This is a whole new studio setup you got going on there. It's, it's almost like uh, this is a CNN quadrant view. Thank you. You like it? I, it's, uh, it's my new private studio. Okay, well, good. So ho hopefully no one at CNN actually has your coordinates because there will be a dirty bomb going on there <laughs> somewhere. Uh, or it's, it's, it's dirty. Don't worry about it. It's just Anderson Cooper hurling cuss words. Host with three eyes open. Yes. I, I've survived that. I, I'm way beyond Anderson Cooper's cuss words. Well, good. I'm, I'm, I'm glad to hear it. So let me, let me ask you this. Uh, today, obviously, it's the trend everywhere. Optics-wise, how do you think this has been for President Donald Trump? Uh, good, bad, worse? It, it seems like it, it wasn't a great day. Yeah, I'm trying to think, what else do we expect, Stephen? I mean, really, what, what was the mainstream media going to do, suddenly surrender and say, oh, my, what a great President Donald Trump is? Uh, I'm not saying it's the best press conference he ever gave, but I can tell you, because I saw it when I was in the Oval with him, He's just fed up with this Russia collusion absurdity. Yep. And if you see yep. the way that they're mixing up the Mueller investigation on collusion with the question of the election tampering by these GRU agents, he's just had enough. And to think that they didn't ask one important question about Syria, nuclear weapons, Germany getting in bed with Russia, they just, it's like the stroke testimony last week. They unveiled themselves for who they are. The mainstream media isn't doing journalism anymore. Steve. Well, I, I agree with you. And I think so. I, I think there are two things that are often conflated, like you touched on. So one, this idea that President Trump colluded with the Russians, of which there, there is really no evidence. Right. I think we, Zero. we agree on that. But then number two, as you said, the Russian meddling in the election for undue influence you know, in an American. There seems to be some evidence for that. But two separate issues. They try to conflate them. So as someone who is generally a supporter, a fair critic with Donald Trump, why wouldn't President Trump take the opportunity? to distance himself from the collusion uh, accusations with this fake news by, by just condemning the Russian meddling when he's got Putin right there. That's one thing I will say as a supporter going, if he does that, that helps him. No, I think, you know, that's definitely a hypothetical thing he could do. But I think he's just fed, enough, fed up. I mean, look at the, what they've done to him and his family. When they actually say that, you know, your son is committing treason when you've got the former director of the CIA, the former director of the CIA, John Brennan, who, before he joined the CIA, at the height of the Cold War, admitted to voting for the Communist Party. And he has the gall today to call the president treasonous. I mean, in 1976, when John Brennan did that, the Soviet Union wanted to turn us into a sheet of glass. I think that's a little bit more treasonous. He's just being a human being. Stephen, if you were being attacked personally every day in the media for being a traitor, not just the attacks you get every day, but yeah. actually being a traitor with regards to one issue, the Russian election, I think you'd be fed up too, especially if they were attacking your family. I, I would I would absolutely be fed up. And as a matter of fact, if they were if I were fed up because they were attacking me for being treasonous with, you know, a KGB, a former KGB thug, I think we we, we both agreed last and not big fans of Putin. I, I would go out of my way to, to, to condemn the thing of which uh, the action for which there is evidence, which is the meddling in the United States election. Let me ask you this. If, if uh, you were still uh, in your position here, how would you handle this situation? What, what would you be doing here? Because, uh, I mean, we have we have you here. I'm not, I love I'm you. not a good guy to ask because my father, if you read my book, the first chapter is about my dad. My dad at the age of 20 was arrested tortured by communist secret police officers and given a life sentence in a political prison. So I'm not exactly the, the best person to ask about how to deal with a KGB officer or Vladimir Putin. Um, I, 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 I think just, you're I'm, the perfect person to ask, actually. Um, look, I, I, look, I see, I, I have to tell you, as a human being, I've seen his frustration in the Oval Office. Sure. I, I, I remember, let me share with you this anecdote. I think it was the day Jared testified or the day Jared uh, gave his little press conference on the Russia collusion garbage. And I was in the Oval alone with the president. 
And I was in there for a completely different reason. And this Russia thing came up because of Jared. And he looked me straight in the eye. I could tell he was, he was angry. And he said, they will never find anything because there is nothing. Uh, I don't want to try and give advice to a man who's in that position and seen his family attacked the way they have been attacked. It's easy to say I would do it better or I'd separate these issues. Uh, at the end of the day, he is the arch communicator. And look, you know C.J. Pearson? J. Pearson. The CJ, CJ the, the black kid, the 16 year old black kid who's very active oh, on Twitter. I, I think so. Yeah, he was a big yeah. Bernie supporter. Yes. Yeah. Well, he's uh, he made a he posted a great tweet today. He said, you're accusing the president of treason who gets up every day to represent America's interests. Look at what he's done for the last 18 months. Look right. at the economy. Right. Look at everything else. Most important of all, you know that under his command, we killed 200 Russian mercenaries in Syria. So let's get real. Uh, which head of state in the West, all of them, NATO combined, has allowed our troops to kill Russian mercenaries that are undermining the Middle East? None of them except Donald Trump. Yeah, I certainly think that Barack Obama were, were, was a lot weaker when it came to Russia. I, I mean, that's uh, there's been the quote going around where he said, what if I win the election will be a lot more flexible. It's been yeah. flex. Yes, flexible is the key word there. Uh, words matter. Flexible. Let it not be misconstrued, President Obama. Uh, so, uh, yes, I, I agree with all. Well, we have some questions actually here from, from Twitter. And I think this is, about, this is a constant theme we toss to the audience. Uh, this comes from Bilo Cash Out. Should we side with our U.S. intelligence agencies or believe Putin? Uh, then Stephen Scott asks, how have so many Americans reached the point where they trust Putin about the same as they do the FBI, DOJ, CIA? This was one of the most common questions where who do right. we, who should Americans trust? Because that was, that was, I will say the big, the big bungle from, 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 bungle from, from Donald Trump today saying, I have no, Putin says no, he said so very powerfully, creating an equivalency. That being said, there aren't, there isn't a lot of faith in a lot of American institutions right now. So I don't know if it's a matter of people believing Putin or just not believing the FBI. But um, if, what do you think of that? What should they trust? If we want, look, Putin's going to lie. He's a, he's a former KGB colonel. He spent his life trying to undermine America, Western civilization, uh, the idea that he's some great national hero. I mean, this is what really pisses me off the most when you see conservatives on conservative websites say, oh, Vladimir Putin standing up for the West and Christianity. This is a guy who persecuted Christians when he was a KGB officer. Right. Let's just get serious. So, so you don't trust him, number one. But to say it's a dichotomy between trusting him and the U.S. intelligence services, let's get hyperfactual. This 17 intelligence agencies or 15, it's garbage. It's not true. If you read DNI's report, the director of national intelligence did not say we have a consensus. In fact, there were dissenting opinions from five or six of the U.S. intelligence agencies. What we do know is that there are Russian fingerprints on actions to do with the last election, especially the code that was used and the kind of encryption that was used to target uh, various internet capacities. And now we have the Mueller indictments. And Stephen, let's be serious about the Mueller indictments. As uh, I think it was Nigel Farage summarized it. Well, 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 we indicted 12 spies for spying. I'm shocked. <laughs> There's gambling in this casino. I mean, really. I mean, it's like Casablanca and, and, and Commander Renault. Uh, th these things have been going on for decades. Yeah. The idea that something happened, especially in 2016, they've been doing this since about 1918. And now the Democrats are worried about it? Come on. Let, let, let's be real. This is, about, about, this is about politics, not about getting to the truth. Uh, well, that actually brings me to another question. This comes from uh, Collected, said, what could Russia and the USA do together that would greatly benefit the people of both countries? And I ask you that because, you know, it's kind of tough to do something to work together with someone who's an ex-KGB thug, like you said. Is there anything that could be done to, to, to sort of thaw this icy relationship? Do you think that's what the president's trying to do? If it were in your hands, would you make the effort knowing uh, Putin's past? I'd use the levers that I know he responds to. Okay. And I think uh, it's not about making nice. You don't make nice with a KGB thug. He's never going to be our friend. He, he's never going to be our friend. Right. So right. you express power. You reassert leadership. The fact that he didn't respond to our killing his Russian mercenaries is very telling. That tells you that he's a little bit worried. Um, at the very, very least, I'd just like him to stand down from his meddling. 
whether it's in the Ukraine, whether it's in Syria. The fact is, we've had 400,000 people killed in Syria, and Russia isn't exactly always on the side of the good guys. So I think it's trying to put him a little bit back into his box, not with some kind of rose-tinted expectation that we're going to hold hands and collaborate on issues together. I, I don't think that's ever going to happen. Okay, a, a final question. Um, I think Vladimir Putin talked about a $400 million uh, at the press conference to Hillary Clinton's campaign. Can you can you clarify that at all? For me? A lot of people are going, wait, hold on a second, we kind of skimmed over this. Do, do we know what that is? A lot of people are curious. I know I am. Uh -huh. I, look, I, I don't work for him. I'm not a press spokesman for Vladimir Putin. Uh, I think he may be doing, he may be trying to emulate uh, the president for, or try and compete with him for the role of master troll. Because you know, <laughs> you know the media will be obsessing about this for the next six months, if not longer. So I, I have no idea. What we do know is, you know, they spent what? $100,000 on Facebook, which got you know, Michael Moore to participate in an anti-Trump rally in New York. These are facts. These are facts. Yeah. What this 400000 is, I don't know. You'd have to ask the Kremlin. At 400 million. No, the 100000 for I think, Five million. Sorry, yeah. I think Putin scored that as a big win. Michael Moore will show up to protest. <laughs> Plus, I will get him walking. It's a win-win. He -win. counts uh, for six people. He counts for a few. Uh, yeah, I, that, that was one of the facts to me that was that uh, I wanted to, today to take an opportunity to at least kind of clarify and illuminate. But that is just about as funny as it gets. I mean, the fact that the only person really fooled here, undeniably, there's consent, is Michael Moore. Um, <laughs> it's, I mean, you can't write it any more perfectly than that. All right, listen, we, 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 have to get, we don't have a ton of time, but your new book, Why We Fight, yeah. Dr. Gorka, tell us about that and where people can find it. Right. So it's uh, it's on Amazon right now for pre-order. It'll be coming out soon. Uh, it's it's basically my analysis of what threatens America, who the big threats are out there, like Russia, like China, like ISIS, how to deal with them. And to actually make people want to read it, it's not just dry analysis. It's interspersed with stories of great American heroes that, that a lot of us have forgotten, going way back to our first jihadi war, uh, the Barbary War, uh, a great, great story, a guy called Stephen Decatur, naval officer that led the first Marine Corps special operation against jihadis 200 years ago, right up through uh, Vietnam, Korea. And then lastly, you know, my assertion is you don't just have to be uh, wearing a uniform to be a hero. So there's a vignette, there's a story on Whitaker Chambers, because I think a lot of people who watch your show, I mean, we're crushing it. The right is crushing it when it comes to the Internet. We are the new counterculture. But I'm not sure a lot of millennials know Whitaker Chambers and the truth behind Al Jahir. So, you know, little stories and vignettes of great American heroes. That's fantastic. I think a lot of people should should read that. I th actually think uh, uh, Joe Rogan recently was talking about a lot of conspiracy theorists who you see in the right. He said, you know, they'll go into all these conspiracy theories, but how many of them can really talk about Fidel Castro sure. overtaking the government? How many of them can really give you history on Che Guevara? He's like, so that's kind of cool to be anti-authoritarian, but you do have to know your facts. You do have to also start going down the path of learning history. And stories and anecdotes are a great way to do that. That's the foreground, and in the background is the whole historical context. It is why we fight out July 23rd at Seb Gorka. Hey, thank you so much, brother, for being on. We appreciate it. Hey, if you like this video, subscribe or click the notification bell right next to the subscription button because subscribing doesn't mean anything anymore now, according to the YouTube gods. And uh, if you like the late night show, you can watch it every single day, a full hour at loudwithcreditor.com slash mugclub. Subscribe there. That way we aren't beholden to the evil YouTube overlords and we don't have to start playing video games with mouth sound effects or children react.